hey guys welcome back in this video we are discussing about uh, what is multiple linear regression or in short MLR um, and in some papers it is referred to as multivariate uh, regression so in my earlier video I have discussed about a simple linear regression or a single variate regression where we have only single independent attribute or single attribute uh, single feature independent variable to predict uh, the output so that is called as a single uh, linear regression in this or my bad simple linear regression and this is uh, what we're discussing about is multiple linear regression where we have more than one input feature uh, which uh, will be used to predict the output so let's start with some theory first so as you can see on my screen the equation for simple linear regression is y equal to b0 plus b1x what is b0 b0 is our c that is a constant value and it is also called as intercept so there are different names in different terminologies the correct name is intercept actually and b1 is our independent uh, sorry it's it's our coefficient of for our x independent variable now that is for simple that simple linear regression when we have only single feature now let's consider a scenario where we have multiple features which is actually uh, a very you know, what what to say a real time scenario for example you are predicting uh, the prices of stock so what all information you require uh, you know uh, for building your model you require the current stock price you require uh, the current uh, you know market value you require the previous history also that that means you have you need a more than one feature so multiple linear regression is is you know is highly used in the market there are different uh, models as well uh, which has already replaced this particular MLR because it has a uh, few uh, uh, drawbacks as well but uh, let's start with some theory first okay, let me just expand this I think it should be visible now so multiple regression also known as simply as multiple regression is a statistical technique that uses uh, several dependent or explanatory variables to predict the outcome of an independent variable now what are independent variable it, we have x1 x2 and x3 and they will be coefficients it, it, it's more like a weight so as and when you know uh, you move forward in, in data science domain these variable will have different names as well some will call it as as, as weight some will call it as a as, as feature weights and uh, in, in our terminology we are calling that calling it as coefficients so uh, there are different names so don't be confused so there are only two normal equations finding a least square solutions involves solving two equations with two unknown that is in the case of simple linear regression this is our equation now in terms of multiple regression we have to find multiple coefficients so it's not as easy as uh, you know to find the uh, the variable for simple linear regression equation okay so with multiple regression things gets more complicated that is we have k independent variables and they will be k plus one regression coefficients why because the first coefficient is x0 which we always consider as x1 it may be different for you know uh, uh, different scenarios but still uh, as, as a general practice we consider it as one x0 as one so the, the equation will be x plus one numbers i mean to say so there are k plus one normal equations finding a least square solutions that involves solving k plus one equations which will obviously be difficult because they will have more uh, calculations to do and can be done with ordinary algebra but it is unwidely used now for one variable the value of b b is m m is our uh, coefficient so the the general equation for a single linear regression is simple linear regression is mx plus c so here m is nothing but b b is our coefficient and uh, to find the value of b this is the formula sum of x y upon uh, you know x square sub sum of uh, x square how have we calculated this i have already discussed in my earlier uh, video this is calculated from using ols technique some people call it as method some people will call it as a as, as an algorithm as well but if somebody is, is asking you this particular equation which we are directly using is uh, is, uh, is is formulated using ols method and the value, once b is calculated we will just calculate c as c bar which is our original value 
equal to our predicted value so this is how we will calculate in case of two variable as you can see this is again a simple scenario the calculation becomes more complex so we need to create a, a whole lot of matrix if we are doing it manually but uh, we don't have to because we have libraries nowadays so the value of b1 coefficient will be like this and b2 coefficient will be like this so this is a very complex not very complex but yes it requires a lot of calculations to do so we cannot do it manually so once b1 and b2 are calculated we, we will calculate the b0 easily by just putting the vari variable because x1 is already given y we already have for the initial case for training purpose i mean to say so and the error function will be as you can see this is our observed data this is our predicted data so the error will be y minus y hat this is just for you now understanding we are not using this error function now because everything is done and calculated and that's how this optimized equation has been uh, has been uh, formulated okay so that was all about the theoretical part now this example uh, uh, i have taken from github of uh, akash sarode uh, it has uh, you know, a very good uh, what is a step by step description as well so let's discuss first i'm importing the libraries importing the data set as you can see i'm just taking the first two rows of my data set which has r d spend administration infrastructure spend country and profits what we are trying to predict here the, our output variable will be profit and we, here we have one categorical variable as well as country which we have to take care before building our model first what i do what i what I, we have done is taking or uh, 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 extracting all the independent features the first four features which, which what we have is independent and the last profit feature is the dependent so the y will have the last column and other four columns will be with x as you can see all except profit column and only profit column and then i am just trying to print a correlation matrix why we are doing it just to see whether you know, there's any high correlation between any any specific columns in that case we can obviously you now uh, uh, remove that column for example the correlation between r and d spend to r and d spend is one that is it's the same variable right so it, it's high, highly correlated so the correlation between r and d spend and administration is positive 0 0.66 and between r and d spend and infrastructure spend you can see is is very close to one so we can take a chance to remove this variable because we don't know we do not need more number of features for our model otherwise it will overfit so that's the first thing so if somebody is asking you how how will you take care of you know overfitting problem then re, uh, reducing the number of input features which we have provided with just take the correlation if any of the values are highly correlated with each other that means you know uh, they are related so we can all obviously of course remove one of the feature it's a small uh, uh, library sorry uh, it's a api which we are calling correlation on our pandas data frame directly we are not using any other uh, machine learning library for this one so this is just for displaying purpose okay so now let's start first as i said we have one categorical value called column as us uk australia india but our as you know our machine learning model only deals with numeric values so first we have to convert to numeric values and this is a procedure what i'm doing we have uh, imported label encoder and one hat encoder now what is the need of a label encoder first because this is to convert our uh, our uh, country column to ordinal format what is ordinal format that is it is in the sequential or in the ordered format that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 this is the ordinal format this is very important guys please take a note this is this will be in the ordinal format so once we have it we can pass our ordinal data to our one hat hot encoder now we all know what is one hot encoder it's just like you know there will be unique columns created with the number of features unique features we have in our ordinal format my bad not feature but the number of you know uh, different values what we have for example in our case we have one two three that means there will be three columns created and then it, it will be like a sparse matrix it will be only ones and zeros diagonally it's, so it's done okay so printing first two and this is just normal so as you can see this is the first two rows that i have printed the last column is my country column which is changed to now numeric 
2 and 1 I just printed two call two rows only that's why there's no zero over here after one had hot encoding as you can see my initial column length was 4 now it has become 2 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 my bad 6 because uh, the country column has now been divided into three parts that is what one had one hot encoding is used for okay now there's a concept also known as dummy variable trap now what is a dummy variable trap so let's say if you have a model which predicts cat and dog so you do not need to train your model to predict both cat and dog so what usually the scenario is we just train our model to predict cat if it's not cat then obviously it will be dog similar case happens when we have uh, many dummy variables created in our project so if we have six classes to predict we will just train our model for five if it's not five then obviously it will be six so this is why we always remove one of the variable there are few libraries which will take care of this uh, functionality automatically in our case it is not done so uh, we have done it automatically so we just remove the first column that's it nothing else we have done splitting just a main scenario splitting the test data and train data from our main data test size is 0 0.2 only fitting using linear regression model fitting and printing the coefficients so you can see this is how we print the coefficients and intercept and one two three four five six so we have six coefficients available my bad five coefficients and we have one intercept this is the value of our intercept i should have rounded off to some value but anyway now i'm just predicting the test result so this is our x test which we are trying to predict and this is our output you can always you know uh, map it or you know use matplotlib to display this properly i have used in my earlier uh, video as well you can always have it verify like how our model has like what, what's accuracy of our model and uh, how exactly the or the best fit line has been calculated from and what's the error rate now one more thing so if you have uh, uh, five different uh, input features as you can see I have shown here here we have four different features as you can see now we now this is a very general scenario but what if we have 20 features now if you have more number of features that means your your model will be overtrained that is the problem overtrained in the sense overfit so we always want to choose the best possible uh, features that's the reason there are different uh, what, what, what would you call it? there are different algorithms to use the one which we are using is backward elimination that means we will just remove one variable and we will see the performance why we are using it because we have only four variables we can always use PC that is you know principal component analysis for EDA verification EDA analysis and all which will remove all the unwanted or you know uh, uneffective uh, uh, columns but that is a bit of a advanced stage we'll discuss it on a later stage but here we are doing it manually what we are doing we are just removing one variable and we are we are seeing what is the performance of the model so this is a very important question which we should be aware about so that's it for this video and uh, yeah you can see the p values over here what is what is the significance of p value we'll discuss later but if the p value is high that means that particular column is not helping our model to predict properly so that depends upon our on our hypothesis testing so that's it for this video guys i'm sorry it's it is close to 14 minutes i'm really sorry so thanks for watching bye bye